Warning, this video contains hella spoilers for Life is Strange up through episode 4, so go do yourself a favor and get caught up before proceeding. First of all, thanks for all your positive support on our last Life is Strange fan investigation. Last time we proved that Mr. Jefferson took the drugged Kate to the Prescott Bunker slash photo studio in the old barn, and that a faculty member, likely Samuel, is near enough to the scene to hear the gunshot and help out when Chloe gets shot. I mean, psycho! No, the time she got shot in the junkyard. Jesus, I shot myself! Ah, I shot myself! That no, Mr. Jefferson at the junkyard with the pistol. Sheesh, Chloe, you're giving Kenny a run for his money at this point. If you're confused about how exactly we prove these things, try to keep up with the class. I did know, but I kind of forgot. You either know this or not, Max. <laughs> I'll link you to the last video in the description. Now it's come to my attention that there's actually a map of Arcadia Bay in the menus, so I didn't have to make my own. Uh, thanks? It's kind of hard to see. Hmm, look at that. The map under those pictures exists in the game files. I just know it. Somebody could extract the texture data from the game and produce a complete map. And somebody did, and that somebody is me, so get ready for the world premiere, possibly, of the official Arcadia Bay map. BAM! Wow, looks like I actually got this stuff pretty correct last time. Oh, speaking of last time, I missed something interesting. The game gives you photos of all the places Nathan goes in the GPS coordinates, even the places only he goes. So we have a photo of his house, a wooded area he visits, and the mysterious yellow location from the last video, which turns out to be a gas station. Now we know. Today, though, I'd like to look at Frank's drug data under the microscope. First, I'll highlight locations like I did with the GPS data. Tell you what, I'll even use the same colors. Red for Blackwell, blue for the beach. I'm using light blue for the lighthouse, because you'd park at the beach to get there. Greens for the diner, which is likely the two whales, as we've seen Frank there multiple times. Yellows for the gas station. There's a new location, nightclub. I'm gonna mark that in orange. Note that this could be the bar Chloe said she was at with Nathan the time she was drugged. There's also boondocks, which we know from the time and customer is the Prescott barn. And there's one entry for the parking lot as the location, which could mean almost anywhere. That leaves us with one entry unmarked the entry for Chloe's $3,000 loan. Now this could be a reminder that Chloe owes him money rather than a note that this is the day the transaction takes place, except if we drag out the GPS data one more time, we find that Chloe visits Frank's beach minutes before this transaction takes place. Also, you know, Frank probably wouldn't ledger a date and time if it was just a reminder. So it's pretty safe to say the loan takes place on this date at the beach. But this seems to cause major contradictions with what we already know because it takes place only one week before the game starts. On the day the game starts, we see Chloe desperate enough to pay back the loan that she's trying to blackmail Nathan. It's only been a week, Chloe, what the heck did you spend the money on, and why the heck is Frank hassling you so hard to get it back already? Actually, what could she have told Frank that would convince him to loan her $3,000? You don't mean you... Ah, oh, no, we didn't have sex. Gross, man. But the biggest contradiction to me is this. Chloe tells us repeatedly that she borrowed the money to run away with Rachel. And I thought I'd have enough for me and Rachel if she showed up. I just made the mistake of borrowing money so Rachel and I could bail out of here. 
But at this point, Rachel's been missing for six months. Now this could be wishful thinking on Chloe's part, but I don't buy it. If you borrow money from someone dangerous and don't plan to pay it back, you make damn sure you know your exit strategy, not just hope for the best. So what does Chloe spend $3,000 on in one week? My first guess was that she bought her car with it, but we have GPS data for her car from before the loan, so it can't be that. But we do have a list of everywhere she goes during that week. So let's take a look. After the loan, she goes home, junkyard, Blackwell. None of those places are even places you can spend money. To Wales. Okay, with her figure, I know for a fact she didn't eat $3,000 worth of food. You put your whole damn college fund on your tab. Beach. Possibly spent it on drugs, except... Frank's ledger shows nothing else from Chloe that week. There's one gas station visit, but I don't know what you could blow through $3,000 on at a gas station. Actually, on this whole sheet, there's only one place that could make sense, and that's this unidentified location she visits at about 11 a.m. My first guess would be that this is the bar or maybe nightclub she was drugged at, but at 11 a.m., she'd have to be one hell of an alcoholic. Who needs coffee when you've got booze, right? No. If her bar visit was this week, which I think is likely as she's blackmailing Nathan about it at the end of this week-long period, then she must have done the responsible thing and gotten a designated driver, a taxi, or walked. Props to Chloe, I guess. Where exactly she does go, I'll leave up to speculation, but I think we have one thing we can agree to conclude on from this. Chloe didn't borrow that money for Rachel, and Chloe is intentionally hiding what she really spent the money on from Max. If the money was really for Rachel, she'd still have most of it, but she doesn't. We've searched her room, her house, we've even searched her pockets. No $3,000, no items of significant value. Chloe has unpaid parking tickets and her family has unpaid bills, so there are good things she could have put that money towards, but there's no evidence of that money going toward anything good. Nothing good, Max. Nothing good. I did have more to go over on that drug data, but I guess we'll have to talk on that next time. Hint, hint. Anyway, thanks for hearing me out, and have a nice day. Thank <laughs> you.